What is going on everybody? Welcome back, MTG here with another episode. If you're new to the channel, hi there. So I've had the Asus Zenfone 10 for nearly six months now, and I wanna share with you guys my thoughts, my opinions, my experience of using this device, uh, because some things have been changing up with Asus. They just released the Asus Zenfone 11 Ultra, and I did pre-order that. It hasn't shipped yet, but I will be sharing that with you guys once it does arrive in the studio and comparing it with the Asus Zenfone 10 as well. But here's the thing, Zenfone 11 Ultra, not the Zenfone 11. So we might not see a smaller Zenfone 11. Uh, there's no signs of it as of yet. Um, so this compact flagship smartphone is the last one. The Asus Zenfone 10 is going to probably be uh, the end of the flagship compact smartphone era so RIP but yeah this is still a great device and I want to start things off with design I think you you'll like this once you do hold it in the hand so it has this bio based plastic and it has a really nice texture texture I like it it feels like construction paper and it has matte metal frames which I also do appreciate uh, the power button right here also doubles as a fingerprint sensor so that's a huge plus like it doesn't get it doesn't completely omit a fingerprint sensor it still has it right here in the power button uh, and then it does have the volume buttons right here on the right hand side nothing on the left we got speaker grill, uh, we got the SIM tray, we got USB-C, uh, we got a headphone jack, which is really, really rare. We're not seeing that in 2024, at least with like flagship smartphones. So it's really nice to see it here. Up on the front, we have a 5.9 inch full HD uh, display with a 120 hertz panel. And when you do play certain games, it does go up to 144 hertz. So to keep that in mind, uh, it's IP68 water resistance. And in the past six months of using this device, I've used it caseless and I've been careful with it. It's gotten some like small scratches on the front of the display, but the back has been flawless. Uh, it does have a dual camera setup, and if you look real closely, one camera is thicker than the other, and that's because of its like uh, gimbal stabilizer feature, and we're gonna get to cameras in a little bit. But I just overall, overall like the look of, and feel of this device, and I love how they have their logo right here. It says Asus Zenfone right here. I don't know, it feels really minimal and really cool. It definitely a different, stands out uh, when compared to like something like the iPhone 15 and the Samsung Galaxy and all that stuff. It just sticks out a little bit more and I do appreciate it. So design in this past six months has held up really well. Now performance is also really good. Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, it's 2023's chipset, but that's perfectly fine, it's a champ. And day-to-day -day use has been right on point. I've had no bugs, no hiccups whatsoever. Now my model has eight gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, and everything I've thrown at it, like watching YouTube videos, uh, playing some games like Call of Duty, has been awesome. It has no issues whatsoever, browsing the web, social media, all that stuff, great. I can definitely give a thumbs up for that. Uh, you can pick up a model with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs, 512 gigs of storage. Um, but overall, you'll still love the performance on this device. In addition, my Asus Zenfone 10 is running Android 14, which is the first major OS update, and we're only getting two major OS updates with the Asus Zenfone 10, so just do keep that in mind. Asus uh, is not pushing any more, at least at the time of this recording, so 14 and 15 is gonna be it, and that may be a, a deal breaker for some, because if you wanna keep your phone for more than two years, this may not be it. It's not gonna have that software support. So that's the one thing I'm really upset about with the Asus Zenfone 10, but pretty much everything else, especially in the performance department, has been awesome. I think you'll like the software too. It's really clean, it's near stock Android. Uh, Asus does throw a couple extra features, but for the most part, it's just a stock Android look and feel, and I think you will like it. Let's hold over to the back cameras right here. So we got a 50 megapixel main, which also has a 13 megapixel ultra ride and the six axis gimbal stabilizer system. And the results are good. They are, um, but I'm not, here's the thing. I'm not a big camera guy. So for me, I think most devices will suffice. Um, but if you like oversaturated photos, then yeah, Asus Info 10 might be that device for you. Um, but if you're like really into cameras and you're a camera, I guess camera nerd, and you want to have the best of the best camera on a smartphone, then probably this is not going to be the device for you. And especially you want to have more uh, versatility 
you're only getting a wide and ultra wide. You're not even getting a telephoto lens here either. So just do keep that in mind. This camera setup is not for versatility. It's for me, I see it as like more just getting the job done. So if camera quality is, or just camera versatility as well is not a priority for you, this camera's, uh, this phone camera will suffice. And for me, it sufficed my needs. Like I've gotten the job done and I like it. I do like it, but again, uh, it's not the best of the best camera uh, setup that we have on a smartphone. I guess that's okay. Um, some smartphone companies do prioritize in some departments and uh, Asus is definitely not prioritizing. Like they're not throwing everything they can in the camera department. That's perfectly okay. But the one thing they do perform really well in is the battery department. 4,300 milliamp hour battery. That doesn't sound like a lot, especially when you think about devices uh, like the OnePlus 12, like a 5,400 milliamp hour battery, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra 5,000 milliamp hour battery. I think even the Asus Zenfone 11 has, uh, I think 5,500 milliamp hour battery, something like that, but they're large, large capacities. And I'll be honest, this is large capacity for this compact form factor. I'm starting my day around like 6, 6.30, at the very least like 7 a.m. like I'm out and ready to go. And I'm ending my day at around 9.30, 10 p.m. with around 55, 60% of battery life. That is really good. And I'm using my phone like all day. Like I'm calling, I'm texting. Uh, when I'm free, I'm playing Call of Duty. I'm watching lots of YouTube videos. Got to support uh, my favorite YouTubers. So I'm always watching their videos, giving them likes and commenting and just engaging with them and meeting new people. Uh, and it's awesome like it really truly is awesome like i can go into the second day without charging this device that's how good it is but i still end up charging it as well uh and here's the thing it has wireless charging the asus Zenfone 9 didn't have it i like that this one has wireless charging so battery has been awesome battery life has been really good i can easily recommend it uh let's quickly talk about the pricing so we got three configurations. The one I have is 749, uh, eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. I think that's the sweet spot for most. 120 gigs of storage at this point is, I would play it safe and get double the storage. Or if you want 16 gigs of RAM, then get half a terabyte of storage as well. Go for that, that's 799. Um, the reason why though I personally bought it because at the time was like the shipping for the top end model was weeks out and I was really impatient. I just wanted the device, uh, but the 16 gigs of RAM and half a terabyte of storage would have been my choice. But for most people, I would recommend the middle choice, the, the choice that I have right now, the config that I have right now. Uh, and overall here are what I have to say about the Asus Zenfone 10, just kind of to summarize everything. Love this design, it's superb form factor it's compact display is really great and easily a one-handed device at least for me battery life is one of a kind i am thrilled with the results of the battery life uh, i love the software and the performance on this device too uh, near stock android experience buttery smooth even though it's snapdragon 8 gen 2 last year's chipset that's fine. We're at a point where chipsets are getting so good that year to year improvements are not as drastic as they once used to be. Uh, but here's the thing. If you're looking for a compact, compact, I can't even say compact flagship phone, this is probably the one to buy. Uh, but here's a, just keep this in mind that this is a 2023 compact yet powerful smartphone so if you want a compact flagship phone from 2024 this is not going to be it but that's okay that's perfectly okay again we're at a point where smartphones are so good last year's devices are really good one year two years three years down the line even four years like they perform super duper well but you're just not going to be I don't think we're getting a compact Asus Zenfone 11, at least right now. If it happens, Asus, if you ever come across this video and you do make an Asus Zenfone 11, I will be thrilled. I honestly will be thrilled. Uh, I will be have, I'll be keeping my eyes out uh, to see if that does come out. And if it does, you'll be seeing it here on the channel. But I can easily recommend the Asus Zenfone 10 as uh, the last compact flagship smartphone ever to walk the face of the earth at least right now 
I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, be sure to super man that like button, comment down below, and best of all, share this video because it really does help out the channel a lot. And will help push my content out to more people. Definitely be sure to check out my latest wallpaper pack. It's called Urban Glow. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below. That's been all from me. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.